The title of this sermon is, In This Christmas, How Will We Welcome Jesus? And it's in base of Luke 2, 8 to 20. Please, let's pray. Please, dear God, allow us through the Holy Spirit to preach your gospel. Thank you, dear Lord, for this Christmas Eve. And please provide us your guidance. We are praying in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of Christmas. Amen. In these days, it's very popular the song, All I Want for Christmas is You. I recognize that it has sticky music and easy to please the ear. We all have some sense that Christmas has to be more about what we want. I want to help my beloved mom. I want to pay my doctoral studies. I want to travel to Mexico to visit my family. And I want to have a new sneakers to be allowed to walk in better. Of course, I want all of you to be in good health and be very blessed by God. Of course, what I most want now is that this pandemic will finish now. I think that you wish yourself it also with all your heart. What do you want for Christmas? Pastor Randy Orndorff in his sermon says that it's nice when we think about gifts or cars or letters we receive because it does say to us there are folks who care and want us to feel appreciated, encouraged, and loved. Folks are the gifts. No amount of money can buy. The gifts, cards, or letters that come from a heart full of love, care, kindness, and grace are gifts that have extrinsic but also intrinsic value. False gifts affects people positively. Thank you very much on behalf of my wife and mine for all your prayers, presents, cards, letters, poinsettias, cakes and cookies that you have, have so graciously sent us not only at Christmas, but throughout all the year. Thank you so much. You are so generous. I am sure that God will bless you abundantly. I invite you to think, what does God want us to have, not only at Christmas time, but for all our entire life? Why would God want us to have something so special like hope, peace, love, and joy? It's because God loves us and wants the best for us. And God, knowing best what we need, God gave us a most special and precious gift in the giving of his son, Jesus. Beloved siblings, Siblings in Christ. The Christmas is a story of God knowing the humanity needed a lot of help. We still need a lot of help from the heaven. God knows that his people need hope and healing, especially in this end of year 2020. We need a special blessing on this Christmas day. I love the story of the nativity. God came to a couple who had very little, but Joseph and Mary had a strong love and commitment among them. They had a lot of what we need most, faith, trust, assurance, confidence God would provide. Even though they were living very difficult times, God chose 
that humble family, people without power and influence, but rich in faith and love, so that in this family his only son could be raised, educated, and grow up. Is not it amazing? God sent Jesus to a very young Mary. I hope you remember my last sermon. And to a Jewish carpenter who were willing to obey the Lord and follow God's plan for them. Jesus was born in a barn or a cave and was laid in a manger, the place where the cattle eat. From the very beginning, the Almighty Father wanted to give us a lesson of humility. If the Son of God himself has a manger for his cradle, how can we demand luxuries for ourselves? You already know me. It fascinates me to know that although the Gospels do not provide more details, we thought that Jesus was born surrounded by all of creation, by animals that gave him warmth and protection. I love the nativity scene. Do you too? Talking all this into account, let us meditate, please. Is Christmas really about what any of us want? It is really about what we think we need? Or is it more than this? Christmas is more about giving to God to giving to others. Christmas is more about how we should welcome Jesus. On the first Christmas, Mary and Joseph welcomed the Lord as a newborn baby, and they gave him all that they were. The angels welcomed the Lord by singing songs of joy and praise, glory to God in the highest. The shepherds came to the place where he laid and welcomed God into the world. The world made flesh, God come to dwell among us. And this holy night, we celebrate the coming of Jesus. Hallelujah. How will we each welcome Jesus? This Christmas Eve service is different than in previous years. We are doing it online. Some of you have participated through video, special things to the Evanstadt's family and Linda Dowling for your great collaboration. We can praise God and welcome Jesus from our homes tonight and tomorrow. However, I am sure that we all wish to meet again in person. Let me tell you a story. Make yourself comfortable, please. In a certain town, there lived a cobbler. His name was Martin. Martin's wife and children had died long ago. And Martin's despair was very deep indeed. He really began to lose his reason and purpose for living. One day, an old holy man stopped by Martin opened up his heart to him. He said, I no longer wish to live. I feel as if I am without hope. The holy man said, despair comes from the wish to live only for your own happiness. He told Martin to read the gospels and to see how God could have him live. So Martin took him up and it and started reading his Bible. 
he discovered it made his heart so light that he read it every day. He came across a story of a Pharisee, a Jewish religious leader who invited Jesus to dinner. A woman who was a sinner came there and anointed Jesus and washed Jesus' feet with her hair and with her tears. And of course, this was frowned upon and Jesus said, this woman has anointed me, which you have not done. Martin wondered if he himself would treat the Lord poorly if he came to him. Then he fell asleep. Suddenly, he was awakened by a voice. No one was there, but he heard, Marty, look out into the street tomorrow, for all shall come. The next morning, Martin built his fire and started to work, but could not help but look out the window many times. Then, an old man named Estepanich appeared and began clearing snow for a tradesman across the street. When Martin looked at again, Estepanich had leaned on his shovel and up against the building. Martin went to the door and said, Come in, come in and warm yourself. May God bless you, said Stepanik, as he shook off the snow. He tottered and nearly fell. Martin gave him tea and told him what happened the evening before. As Stepanik listened tears ran down his cheeks, he said, you have given me comfort for soul and body. Later, as Martin stitched on a boot, he looked out to see a woman turning her back to the cold wind. She had a baby in her arms, and she wore only thin clothes. Martin called out and invited them in. He gave them bread and soup, saying, Eat, my dear, and warm yourself. The woman said her husband was a soldier who had been away for months. She could not find work and had sold everything to get money for food, including her child. Martin found a cloak for the woman to rob herself in and gave her money to get her shawl out of the pawn store. After working a while longer, he looked out and saw an old woman selling apples from a heavy basket she carried. A boy in a tartar cap ran up snatch an apple and try to run away. But the elderly woman grabbed him by the hair. Martin dropped everything and ran out into the street. He said, let him go. Granny, forgive him for Christ's sake. He turned to the boy and said, ask Granny's forgiveness. Later, as she was about to leave the heavy basket, the boy sprang forward and said, Let me carry it for you, Granny. I am going your way. A day's end. Martin's Bible seemed to open himself. Then he heard a voice. Who is it? He asked. It is I, said the voice, and a stepanic smile from a corner of the room 
then vanished. It is I, said the voice again, and there was the woman with the baby in her arms. She smiled. The baby laughed, and they too vanished. It is I, said the voice once more. The old woman and the boy with the apple stepped out, smiled, and vanished. Martin's soul grew glad. He began reading where the Bible opened. At the top he read, For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger. And you took me in, and at the bottom of the page, in as much as you have done it for one of the least of these, you have also done it unto me. Then Martin knew the Savior had come to him on that day, and he had welcomed him. This story is taken from Where Love Is, There Is God by Leo Tolstoy. So, here we are celebrating Christmas and the coming of the Christ child. How will we welcome Jesus? In what ways does Jesus come to us every day? In all sorts of ways. We may look at this story and think of all that Martin gave. I wonder what Martin received in his giving. What do you think? What do you think? Christmas is not about what we hope to receive, but what we give to God and to others. And I am going to tell you a secret. By giving to God and to others, we also receive. So no one is left empty-handed. We are all blessed. I am sure that you will be blessed this Christmas day. Which way will you walk? To the manger or away? Towards God or a more self-centered life? Hmm. Toward Jesus or towards some other priority? We prepare to celebrate Jesus coming to earth as we celebrate his birth tonight. Tomorrow and always. Will we welcome him? If you welcome Jesus, you are reflecting the light of Jesus to the world. So, go and shine. Chase away the darkness. Share and choose to be part of the greatest story of all. Born to raise us from the earth, born to give us second birth. Hark, the hell angels sing glory to the newborn king. Jesus invited us into his story. Let us prepare our hearts to receive this Christmas gifts of grace, forgiveness, hope, a new life. And lastly, can you feel it? Can you feel it? Can you feel it? You are not alone. You are not alone in this night. You are not alone. alone. The child Jesus is with you tonight. You are not alone. Christ is with you. Hallelujah. Could you repeat with me, please? Could you repeat with me, please? 
from your homes. Could you repeat with me, please? Glory to God in the highest heaven. I am not listening to you. I am not listening to you. I will repeat. Could you repeat after me? Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among foes whom he favors. Hallelujah. Amen. Please, let us pray. Dear Lord, on this holy night, we thank you for sending your only Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for your wonderful gift. Help us understand that Christmas is not about what we expect to receive, but what we give to you and others. On this very special night, we beg you to give an extraordinary blessing to those listening or reading this message. Please provide healing to the sick. Give hope to those who are sad. Give company to those who feel alone. You be the family of those who does not have our families with us. But we also want to welcome you with all our heart. Please accept it. Please help us to be better human beings with others. On this night, Lord Jesus, come to dwell in our hearts. There is room for you in them. We ask this in the name of the child of Bethlehem. Amen. Hallelujah.